appreciate the honourable member for Caribou Prince George. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is, uh, it is indeed an honour to stand before this House and once again talk to Bill C-7, an act to amend the Public Service Labour Relations Act, the Public Service Relations uh, and the Employment Board Act as it deals with our brave men and women of RCMP, of the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And Mr. Speaker, as I, I stand today, I, I was looking back over my previous speech, and I think it's incumbent that we do that once again. Uh, uh, I think we should always remember uh, the sacrifices that not only our veterans, uh, but those that put their uniforms on and they run towards danger every day when others would run away. Mr. Speaker, our RCP members are moms, dads, sisters, brothers. They are volunteers within our communities. They coach minor sports. They work with trip, uh, charities and they contribute to the health and wellness of our communities, not just when they have their uniforms on, but every day. We've talked about the legend of the Mountie previously. From 1873, the Northwest Mounted Police, the 150 first recruits that had the core values of integrity, honesty, professionalism, respect, and accountability. We talked about the legend of the Mountie, always getting his man, Dudley Do-Right, Captain Canuck. We also talked about our national symbols of the Red Surge and our campaign hat, and traveling internationally with Mounties in promotion of Canada and how proud we are of our RCMP force and those brave men and women who indeed are our silent sentinels so that we can rest comfortably every night. They face human tragedy and danger every day. Mr. Speaker, today we're talking about Bill C-7 and how it impacts the 28,461 members. And as we talked about the history of RCMP, of our RCMP, we should talk about today what our RCMP members face. Today, the RCMP are amongst the lowest paid police force in Canada. They have slipped from number one police forces or ranked police forces in the world to well below that. Mr. Speaker, I, I should also uh, mention I was very excited and, and obviously very passionate about getting into this speech. I will be splitting my time with the member from uh, Barry Innisville, and I apologize for not mentioning that sooner, or, and that's just going to ruin my video now. Um, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we uh, our, our RCMP are amongst the lowest police force in Canada. They are paid 30% lower than their municipal colleagues. Morale is in indeed low, at a low point. We are seeing uh, the numbers, the everyday regular force members that are faced with uh, increasing uh, workloads and capacity. Uh, time and again, our, our RCMP member rights and freedoms are secondary to that and those that are committing the crimes. Mr. Speaker, since 1974, RCMP members worked under a non-unionized labour relations regime. They had an organization or a secondary group, Staff Relations Representative Program, SS or SRRP. This was a group that represented the members' rights to management, and that was the only group that was able to uh, collectively represent the interests of uh, the employees and our, our regular force members to management. Uh, despite the co uh, consultative role of SRRP, management has always had the fi final say in all human resource matters. In 2015, the Supreme Court ruled that the Mounted Police Association uh, of Ontario versus Canada in that court case, that existing labour relations program, the one currently uh, in place, violated the rights and freedoms of RCMP members. Mr. Speaker, under Section 2-D, Freedom of Association and Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Supreme Court found that, indeed, rights and freedoms of RCMP members had been violated. Bill C-7 was introduced by this Liberal government in response to this decision last January. 
It was ruled that the Maori should have the right to unionize and engage in collective bargaining. And it should be noted that the RCMP are the only police force in Canada without that right. But the Liberals took this legislation a little too far, Mr. Speaker. Bill C-7 contained a list of issues excluded from the bargaining table as well as a controversial proposal to shift Mounties hurt on the job to the provinces that they are working in. Mr. Speaker, amongst the list of items that were left off were of collective bargaining, were staffing levels, workplace harassment, sexual harassment, conduct, discipline, uniform, scheduling. But, Mr. Spe Madam Speaker, these are all clauses that, and issues that workers, not just RGP workers, but workers should always have the right for a safe environment, a safe workplace, and should have the right and say in those areas. Madam Speaker, the Conservatives were able and the opposition were able to strike down through uh, the Liberal co Committee majority clauses 40 and 42, clauses that would have effectively moved RCMP members and their health benefits to provincial uh, entities. Indeed, workers' compensation claims would have been dealt with provincially, meaning Mounties having a different standard of pay, of pay or sorry, benefits, whether health benefits or workers' compensation benefits, depending on the province that they worked in. We were able to, through the committee, be able to strike that down. And while this is a positive development, it, sadly, it took the spouses of existing and retired RCMP members to convince the Liberal government to finally see reason, Madam Speaker. It's my, it was my sincere hope that through debate that the Liberals would have listened to the other concerns, not just uh, from the Conservative side, but also our NDP side, but the opposition. And indeed, other members in government also shared some of their concern as before the bill went to uh, committee. Um, Madam Speaker, we actually saw hope on this side that if by sending that bill to second reading, or letting it pass and letting it go to committee, that we would see further amendments. Sadly, that was not the case. Madam Speaker, Bill C-7 is failing to support the brave men and women of the RCMP. It takes away their democratic right to a secret ballot, to negotiate other core issues uh, that impact their work environment, that impact their personal and families' lives. But let's talk about the democratic right to secret ballot, Madam Speaker. Our Conservatives will always stand behind the RCMP. We will always support legislation that allows for the democratic right to vote or the secret ballot vote. However, we will not support legislation that so blatantly violates the wishes of its members. Madam, Spe Madam Speaker, I have been stopped a number of times on the street, in shopping centres. I've had emails, I've had letters by RCMP members wishing to be anonymous because they've been told not to speak about this, but voicing their concerns on C7. Madam Speaker, instead of forcing RCMP members to disclose their vote publicly, the Liberals should listen to the, the everyday rank and file. The RCMP members who are concerned that their vote will impact their workplace situation. Now, I think I speak for all members in this House when I say that we proudly support and we defend our men and women who wear their uniforms and we thank them for their service every day. But we as the official opposition respect the Supreme Court's decision that RCMP officers are entitled to bargain collectively. And we even went as far as the majority of some of our Conservative colleagues even voted in favour of C7 to get it at second reading, to get it to the committee. And we were, but we were only able to strike 40, sections 40 and 42, clauses 40 and 42. And the Liberal government, in their open and transparent ways, were unwilling to require that secret ballot certification, an essential requirement in the democratic process. 
So, Madam Speaker, we cannot support any legislation that denies employees that fundamental right to vote in a secret ballot, whether to unionize. We do not use a show of hands or public petition in our democratic elections, nor should we in our, in our workplace. Madam Speaker, I am going to close as, uh, as you are giving me the signal, but I, I just want to say— Sorry, there's, the time is, is up. Um, so you'll be able to uh, maybe add some more uh, with the questions and answers. So questions and answers. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary uh, Secretary to the uh, Leader in the House of Commons. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And I, I do find that it is unfortunate. On the one hand, the uh, Conservatives have decided to vote against uh, Bill uh, C-7. Uh, given the importance of allowing our RCMP to be able to organize uh, in terms of a, of a union for collective bargaining uh, purposes. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I'm a bit surprised on the one hand where the member says that uh, the Conservatives stand behind the members of the RCMP, um, but then on the other hand, they're not, he's not supporting, the Conservative Party is not supporting the unionization uh, of our RCMP, something in which other law enforcement officers already are able to do. My question to, to the member is, how does he, why does he believe uh, not supporting the unionization of the RCMP is a good thing for uh, members of the RCMP? The Honourable Member for Caribou, Prince George. Well, Madam Speaker, it's not that we uh, don't support the unionization of, uh, of the RCMP. The fact that C7, C7 is such a stripped down piece of legislation that does not go far enough to allow our RCMP members, our everyday rank and file, to be able to uh, negotiate simple things such as staffing or scheduling or, or uh, uh, workplace harassment. But, Madam Speaker, one other item is that we are allowing you know, 28,461 members. We trust them to make life and death decisions every day. But the Liberals won't trust them, trust that these members are able to make or vote or have a say whether they want to unionize. It's not that we're against that. We're against the, the, the non-secret ballot. Allow these members to have a say on whether they want to unionize or not. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? The Honourable Member for Esquimalt, Senate Souk. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, we just had another example of what the Liberals have been doing lately, is implying somehow if the bills that they are putting forward, uh, narrow and restrictive as they are, don't pass, there will somehow be a legal vacuum that somehow the RCP would lose their right to organize. Uh, that's not true, because the Supreme Court decision will come into force and it will allow the RCMP to unionize. Uh, but on the, by the same token, my question to my honourable friend uh, who uh, just spoke is about the mistake I think they're making in conflating the secret ballot with the way you organize a union. Because afterwards, once the union is organized, it will be quite public who's a member of the union and who is not. No one will be forced to join a union. And so if people don't wish to be associated with the union, it, they will not be a member of that union. They're not, there's no requirement of membership in any of our trade union uh, facilities there. There's a requirement to pay dues because you receive the benefits of membership, but no one's required to join the union. So I, I'm not quite sure how the secret ballot from election applies uh, to the idea of membership in a union. The R.O. member for Caribou, Prince George. Madam Speaker, we're here today and we're talking about Bill C-7, a, a fundamental piece of legislation that will see ultimately, hopefully, our RCMP uh, ranks uh, on equal footing with their unionized employees. And I think we can all agree that we want to make sure that our everyday rank and file have all afforded to them. Madam Speaker, our argument on this side and our position is that the decision of a few, the decision of a single group small group would impact 28,461 members of the RCMP, Madam Speaker, and that is wrong. Why not give the 28,461 members of the RCMP, the brave men and women who put the uniform on every day, face human tragedy and run towards danger, why not give them a say on whether they unionize or not? Time for a brief uh, question, so questions and comments, questions et commentaires. The Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the House Leader. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, and again, it's just a very simple question to the member. Is here we have legislation uh, that's going to allow RCMP to get unionized. Why, in principle, would he not support the legislation that will enable that to happen? 
The Honourable uh, Member for Par Caribou, Prince George, a brief answer, please. Madam Speaker, it is again going back to the uh, a decision of a few impacting those of the 28,461. I've had a number of both existing RCMP members, everyday rank and file, as well as retired, that's saying fundamentally this bill is flawed. What we are asking the Liberals to do is take this bill back and come back with a better bill. This prepare and, and provide the RCMP, the members, a voice.